and we're going to use as a thought and an idea just simply dying of thirst, dying of thirst. Uh, what, what's Pastor's big point today? Pastor's big point today is that you and I uh, literally can be able to have all of our needs met whenever it is that we come into a real relationship with Jesus Christ. This is my big point. My big point is that whenever it is that we're trying to do life without Jesus Christ and trying to figure things out without him, trying to figure things out without him and trying to do things on our own and trying to maneuver and manipulate and manage on our own, we're going to get to the place where we're fatigued, we're tired, get to the place where we're dizzy, we're disoriented, we can't get in our bearings, and we're going to be confused. We're not going to know what to do, and we're not going to know how to do it. But I don't know about you. I'm going to make up in my mind that I'm not going to die of thirst. I'm not going to be dehydrated. I'm going to get to the place that when I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior, it's not just a moment in time me receiving him, but every single day I'm going to come to him and I'm going to let him feel me to the full every single day I'm going to approach him and I'm going to let him give me what it is that I need that way I can be able to move and maneuver and to be able to conquer and to be able to be what it is that he's called me to be we got to make sure that we do not suffer from spiritual dehydration and when we suffer from spiritual dehydration it's the heart that constantly rejects and again I, I, I can't I can't I can't overemphasize the fact that these individuals was looking for Jesus all this time they were looking for the Messiah they were longing for their king and now their king was finally here but all throughout the gospel of John you see this progressive rejection you see this progressive rejection, meaning that it starts on one level and it continues to progress and continues to progress and they continue to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You see this all the way throughout the story of Jesus, through the life of Jesus, all the way to the point the way he finally gets rejected to the point that they crucify him, that they that they kill him. They come on. Spiritual hydration, dehydration happens to the heart that is inconsistent. And all, all I'm saying is, all I'm saying is when you don't consistently, when you don't consistently drink your water, when you don't consistently um, intake this, this, uh, the mountain that you're supposed to, you will be fatigued, you'll be dizzy, you'll be confused. But in this, in this sense, my inconsistency produces something. Spiritual dehydration happens to the heart that is too familiar. In, in other words, they can't receive what God is doing because they feel like they know God. They can't receive what it is that God is desiring to do. God has, has sent the Messiah. He sent his son. This is God in the flesh that is here. And now they're saying, no, 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 no. We, we're not going to do this because they, this is not Messiah. We're not going to follow him because they become too familiar. And oftentimes, our familiarity breeds contempt. Oftentimes, even when we come together, and this is why I'm always talking to you about awe and talking to awe. When I say awe, I'm not talking about awe, oh, man. I'm talking about awe, like in the, in the book of Acts. Where the Bible says that they were in awe of the things of God. In other words, it was a reverence when it comes to God. Whenever you and I lose our awe, that's when we're going to slip into lethargicness. Whenever you and I lose our awe, that's when we're going to succumb to spiritual dehydration. Spiritual dehydration happens to the heart that does not understand his assignment. I need to understand his assignment. Come on, we live in this, we live in this seeker friendly society. We live in a society that makes everything about you and I, everything about you and I. Even this, even this type of Bible study, we're walking through the word of God and we are literally uncovering who Jesus is. This is what this study is. This study is about uncovering our Savior. This is about literally with a fine tooth comb to the best of our ability, literally trying to layer by layer and by word by word and phrase by phrase and verse by verse and chapter by chapter try to dissect who Jesus Jesus is we get bored with this kind of teaching you know why because not talking about us we want to hear about us I want to hear about how wonderful I am I want to hear about how anointed I am I want to hear about what God want to do in me and through me I want to hear about my best life now and I want to hear about my destiny and I need no 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 that's not that's not what this is about you you, know, you, you your, your destiny gets unlocked when you b begin to understand who he is come on when your your destiny and your purpose is intertwined and intertangled in his purpose Lord that's what Paul said it's in him that I live it's in him that I move it's in him and that I have my very being 
I'm crucified with Christ. It's not me to live, but it's Christ that lives in me and through me. So, so it's not about you understanding your assignment right now. That's not what this chapter is about. That's not what verse 29 is about. It's not about you understanding your assignment. It's about you understanding his assignment. Look at spiritual dehydration. Look at this. Happens to the heart that does not understand his timing. In other words, my enemy can have his desire to want to do something. But if God has not authorized him to do that. He cannot do it. Come on, help me here, sideline preacher. He he cannot do it. That's what what I'm saying. And so Jesus, Jesus was there teaching and preaching, heralding his loud voice with a loud voice. And here they were seeking to get him, but they cannot give him. They're angry. They're frustrated. They're mad. But they cannot do anything because it's all according to God's timing. When spiritual dehydration happens to the heart that delays. 